What's your opinion of tyranny, Mr. Payne? Much the same as yours, Mr. Blake, I should think. Well, would you say our system's tyrannical? That would depend on how you define tyranny. Some would say we're a free people. Not you? Well, we have only the trappings of democracy. Not the actuality? Absolutely not. A little earlier, I heard you talking about the law and justice, or rather, the lack of it. As I say, all systems are despotic unless they take into account the wishes, the needs, of all the people. Before the revolution, in France, it was the king and the people surrounding the king who subjugated the people. Here is the government and the will of commerce. Despotism doesn't necessarily stem from an individual person. It spreads through the body of the state like a cancer. It strengthens itself by assuming the appearance of duty and tyrannizes with repeated calls for unthinking obedience. Just so. Your work is widely read, is it not? It has been, yeah. Yours? No, no. <laughs> Mine isn't, I'm afraid. Not by the people for whom it was intended. The people. I, I mean, the people. The thing is, before they can read it, they've got to be able to read. <laughs> Besides, they, they think I'm a crank, a madman. In other countries, dissidents are very properly executed, not so here. In England, we're considered eccentric and very improperly ignored. And ridiculed, William. Do you think there's a conspiracy against me, Mr. Payne, or is it that my work just isn't good enough? Have, have you come far? From Hampstead. I walk most of the way. We once walked to Tunbridge Wells and back. In a day? Mm. Oh, Tunbridge Wells must be 30 miles away at least. The pleasure of that particular expedition was to be found more in the conception than the execution. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, walking is a very reliable way of getting from one place to another. It's cheap too. It is indeed, Mrs. Blake. <laughs> Call me Kate. Everyone else does. Right, Kate. Oh, why don't you call me Tom? Tom? Uh, what about you, Mr. Blake? Are you uh, William or a Bill? Uh, Bill to you, Tom. Bill, then. Well, Tom, you must be hungry and thirsty after your journey. Kate was going to make some tea, weren't you, Kate? Tea? <laughs> no, thank you. Much too exotic. Well, what would you like? Beer, gin, brandy, a bottle of wine? You're our guest. With the money? I think Mr. Payne's going to stay for supper. <laughs> on the shelf by the sink. Oh. It's always been a bit on the impulsive side. Try this cupboard by the back door. Oh. Don't spend it all. No, look, you don't have to do this. You really don't. No, but uh, if you insist, if you insist, mm. Well, the wine would be very nice. Good. Only... No, the wine's what? perfect. Get, get a bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> you do like rabbit pie, don't you? Oh, I've not had rabbit pie in a long, long time. No. Not since I was last in England, probably. Oh, you've been away? I lived in America until a few years ago, and then France. America? I've always wanted to go there. What were you doing in America? Fighting the War of Independence. <laughs> I wasn't a terribly good soldier, I'm afraid. If I killed anyone, it was almost certainly by accident. I remember firing off a musket at the Battle of Trenton Falls, but I wasn't at all sure in which direction I was supposed to be facing. <laughs> I mean, it's perfectly feasible I could have shot men on our own side. After that, I confined myself to doing what I do best, writing articles, pamphlets, manifestos, to educate, to inform, to counter the lies put about by the enemy, to stir up, to rabble-rouse, to keep the flame of revolution burning in the hearts of men day by day. Just a minute. Whose side were you on? Theirs. You were fighting against the British? Most definitely. Oh, you're that Thomas Paine. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. You're a public enemy. A bad bear. Well, I say. 
fancy me exchanging pleasantries with a public enemy. Whatever would be bother, say. What you come here for? Well, I suppose it was at the back of my mind to pay you a visit. But that wasn't the reason I came. No, what happened was, I, I was walking down by the wall of Lambeth Palace there, when I rather got the feeling I was being followed. Are you sure you weren't imagining it? I don't think so. There were these people in a carriage. I found them very... threatening. So I ran. Can't say more. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, well. Bill! We haven't been here very long. Anyway, they made a change from central London. It's a bit out of the way, of course. But I suppose we're rather suited to that. It's very nice. Very rustic. Personally, I prefer a nice, tidy garden. But Bill can't bear to see anything cut back. He doesn't even let me mow the grass. He says it's man imposing himself on nature. He doesn't really approve of that. That's a very romantic aspect. Gothic, almost. Gothic? Yeah. That's very much in vogue at the moment, isn't it? I've heard Bill's friends talking about it quite a lot recently. The Gothic. Not that I know what it means exactly. Bill's been filling in the gaps in my education over the past few years. But that's been mainly with regard to the classics. Medieval art. Milton and so on. Oh, you're fond of poetry, then? <laughs> Living with a poet. You haven't got much choice, have you? I suppose not. Does he manage to make any sort of a living out of it? Poetry? What do you think? No, it's the engraving what pays the bills. He accepts any sort of commission. You'd be surprised. I remember once taking him his lunch, and there he was copying this painting of a woman sprawled on a bed, wearing nothing but a little ribbon tied just underneath her breasts, decorated with this little heart placed just about here. <laughs> but that's him all over. He has these somewhat radical ideas about sexuality. Did you know that? I have gathered that, yes. He wrote this poem once. In a wife I would desire what in whores is always found, the lineaments of gratified desire. <laughs> hmm. He isn't all possessive, you know. I mean, just the opposite, in fact. I thought he was a religious man. Oh, he is. Very. It's a funny thing, desire, isn't it? I mean, some days there's nothing further from your mind. And at other times it takes you quite over and you can think about nothing else. Dear Mrs. Blake, I'm fearless when it comes to politics and unusually eloquent on the subject, but with regard to this other matter, I confess I'm rather at a loss. Ever since I met you and Mr. Blake a few moments ago, Everything I've experienced has been, in some way, a provocation. I feel I'm someone else entirely, in a magic garden, perhaps, under the moon of a distant star. You're unaccustomed to being loved, I think. I bought a flagon of apple wine. 